She has lots to say, but not in public. Yeah, I have a lot to say, which is why I'm an artist. So that's that's my that's how I talk to the world is through my art. I think most of my work is thought provoking in some way. Um, most of my work has been um, based on nature, organic, but. Um, when the kids, when our kids were home, they were my subject matter because that's what was going on at the time. We develop our perspective as as we're growing up. Um, the rules that we learned in our own families, um, the rules that we learned while going to school, we assume things without asking questions. Um, so, so that the work that I have, I'm working on right now, is based on perspective you know there's so I'm using um, animal symbolism so like I've got meerkats I've got three meerkats which you know meerkats in a group are called a mob um, in some societies um, mobs are considered a bad thing or um, everybody's everybody's dressed the same everybody does the same they don't think for themselves Most people think it's strange. Most adults think it's strange. Kids really love it. Um, they walk right up to it, which is really fun to see. But um, the reason why I created that piece was I was in the grocery store, going through the checkout, and the lady behind the counter said, well, how's your day going? And I'm thinking, I'm having a really crappy day, and I don't think you want to hear it. So then I started thinking, well, why can't I tell you I'm having a crappy day? Because everybody has those days, every single person on the planet. But yet we can't talk about it. Um, so we have all these other emotions that we can't talk about, which just blows my mind because every single person has these emotions. So we present ourselves in a certain light, but we can't really be who we are in front of you know, anybody and everybody. So this culture has different emotions. You know, there's, there's silliness, and there's greed, and there's uh, anger, and there's you know, a bunch of others. And then the one on the top is how we present ourselves. It's, it's just you don't express yourself. There's flowers in the back, and those are the emotions that haven't risen up to the surface yet. And at the base, there's a heart, and that's where all our emotions come out of. It's, it's, that's the base. It's a, it's a bald eagle sculpture, um, and it's six feet tall, and there was no room in the gallery for it. <laughs> um, Anyway, it sits on a base, it sits on a tree, it's a life-size uh, eagle, and it's, it's um, carved steel, it's welded and carved steel. And um, the w reason why I created it, it was actually a challenge from a friend. I bet you couldn't build an eagle. I was just doing wrought iron things at the time, and, you know, functional pieces, and he said, I bet you couldn't do an eagle. Well, <laughs> so, I started creating an eagle out of, out of uh, scrap steel that we had around. So that's how that came about. Evolution, we are doing our, your work has been evolving. Yeah. Latest is start out painting two dimensional Got in the three-dimensional. I should, I, sh I should say why I got into that. I was doing painting, nothing was selling. Came home to him and I said, nothing's selling, what am I doing wrong? He said, well, why don't you try blacksmithing? I said, well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so he was, he was dabbling in blacksmithing. So he taught me 
a few things, and I felt like I was all phones. So I quit. I can't do this. So it took five years for him to convince me to get back out to the shop and try again. So I and the anal one of the analogies used for blacksmithing, how do you make steel, you know, it's hard, how can you move it? You have to picture steel as clay and hot steel moves like clay. So if your thumb is a hammer and your clay is a hot piece of steel and you, you hit it with a hammer, it's gonna move like clay would with your thumb. So that's kind of the That's kind of how he got me out there because it was like, once I saw how metal moves when it is hot, it's like, oh yeah, okay. And then all of a sudden all these ideas started coming. And that's when it exploded. I, don't, I haven't painted in years because this is, the metal work is pretty much taken over. Oh. And now we're getting into bronze casting. Bronze casting. So it was painting first, then it was blacksmithing, then it was metal sculpture, welding metal sculpture, and now it's bronze, bronze casting, which means I'm getting into clay and wax sculpture. Larry's so important, and I don't want to make his head any larger, but... <laughs> I don't know how to build a furnace. I'd, I'd probably blow myself up. I don't know how to build a fur furnace. Um, the mechanics of it, I don't know how to do it. I'm not mechanical. Um, he's, he's a millwright mechanic most of his adult life. So he's got the skills, he's got the knowledge. If I need something, he figures it out. So he's, for, for casting, he's, he's created the furnace for melting bronze. He's figured out how to create a, a melt-out furnace. He's, uh, what else have you, you made all the lifting tongs. Pouring shanks. Pouring shanks. Um, he's done all the research on, you know, what temperature the bronze has to get to for melting. He's, he's done all that. And he's allowed me to just create. So he's, he's just really important. I could not do this without him. Brent from Great River Door saw my sculptures and he says, you have to bring your stuff to Crossing Arts. You just have to. So we jumped in the car and we drove down here and said, uh, you guys interested in anything I do? And I had two sculptures with. Um, I think we were bringing them down to Bloomington for a show. Right. So we stopped in then. That's why, that's why we had him with. And met Lisa, she was working that day, and, and she said, yes, yes, we're interested. <laughs> so she's been great. Check out, check out our website, earthequalforge.com.